Hello everyone, my name is Sharose Walji, and here with me I have David Sarita of David Sarita Technologies. Here's some quick facts about David Sarita. David was involved in seven years of nuclear fusion research and development. In 1994, he spoke in U.S. Congress on nuclear fusion technology. He's the director of Los Angeles Tesla Foundation, expert in Tesla technology and science for a cleaner, sustainable environment. President of High Energy Micro Devices, Landmine and Contraband Detection Technologies for seven years, military correspondence and technology consulting. Five years partnership with Boyd Bushman Lockheed Martin, inventor of the Lockheed supersonic jet. He was a scientist on space propulsion technology research and development. David has a partnership with NASA scientists on research and education on UFO phenomena. And of course, he's the inventor of the light stream technologies. On a personal level, he's hand planted 1.3 million trees in Canada over 22 years. He studied with the Dalai Lama in India and has been conducting a 40 plus years daily meditation practice. Hi, David, how are you today? Good, how are you? Excellent. We have some questions for you. We're hoping you can help us answer. Can you tell us, David, what the difference is between Rife technology and David Sarita technology? Okay, Rife, Royal Rife identified under a microscope living viruses and bacterium and he found using a transmitter at very close range to the virus that he could use certain frequencies to disable the virus and he did this in a, a number of different ways see most of the rife frequencies are in the range of human hearing so between you know, just below human hearing, let's say 7.83 7 hertz is the frequency of the earth, according to the Tesla Schumann resonance. I can hear at 11 hertz when it's really quiet. Most humans mm -hmm. cognitively hear at 20 hertz. And 20 hertz, incidentally, is the frequency of the wavelength of the planet Mercury, the first planet next to the sun. Okay. So it tells you how huge... 20 hertz is as a wavelength it's the size of the whole planet mercury right wow yeah and the wavelength of the earth at just under 25,000 miles around at the equator is comes out to about seven and a half hertz but the the frequencies of the earth vary depending on how high above the earth's cavity the wave is traveling around the earth so you take the speed of light I use the speed of light in inches divided by the wavelength to get your frequency. And if you want to know the if you want to know the wavelength, you take the speed of light divided by the frequency and it'll give you your wavelength. So whatever measure you use for the speed of light, whether it's inches or feet or miles per second, right. the the wavelength will appear in that same unit of measure. So what Rife was doing was at first he was pulsing the specific audible frequencies not using a speaker but using a transmitter right and th and then he evolved to the point of using a radio wave as a carrier and what okay. that means is a carrier wave is for example when you listen on the radio and you tune in to let's say 17 29 um you know megahertz right okay. whatever it is that's the carrier frequency for all that music in the human voice so you can put low frequencies such as the human voice and carry it on a high frequency wave and there's an ineffectiveness to that and and what i found was that carrier frequencies first of all are still very long like like for example if you use 10,000 hertz as a carrier wave for example you okay. would take you take your calculator and you mm -hmm. open your calculator up and you, you go to I'll give the speed of light in feet okay. so speed of light in feet 
is nine hundred eighty three million five hundred seventy one and fifty six point four two nine two eight feet per second. That's the speed of light. Very accurate in feet per second. Okay. So to know how big 10, 000, a 10,000 hertz wave is, the wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. So I take my calculator, I put the speed of light, which I just mentioned, yeah. divi divided by 10,000 hertz, one, two, three. My wavelength in feet is 98,357 feet. So what that tells you is most of that wavelength will not attenuate with the human body. It will it will miss it, right? Okay. For, ex for example, the height of the human body, because the spine is made of calcium and calcium is a conductor metal, it yeah. acts like an antenna. So an antenna that is standing straight up against the earth is that's grounded is a is a quarter of a wavelength. So to give you an example, the height of the human body times four, um, so I'm six feet times four is 24 feet. But, right. but 10,000 but 10, hertz is 98,357 feet. So most of that wave is missing the body. Now when you, that's why like some people are saying that, okay, you can't, David Sarita technology, you can't just pulse frequencies and not use a carrier wave. Well, first of all, some people are trying to be true to Rife, but Rife did it both ways. Right. right? He did. Sure. You can take any transmitter, in fact, any conductor for that matter, and you can pulse it at any frequency you want. Right. I can take a piece of steel and pulse it at 1.1 megahertz. Now, that doesn't mean that the length of the steel is proportional to that frequency. It just means that a percentage of that steel will vibrate. Will land, will, will land in that frequency range. Right, will land in that frequency range. But that doesn't mean it's not effective. As I understand it, you don't use radio waves as carriers. Can you explain why that is? Right, here's the reason why. Right. Most people in this argument don't get this. The human brain and nervous system can pulse waves between 0 0.1 all the way to 200 hertz. Those are really huge wavelengths. So let's take let's take the 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 formula for the delta part of the brain. So let's say the delta. You have deep delta, theta alpha, beta, and gamma brain wavelengths. Right. So let's say theta, where we dream, happens to be around the same frequency of the Earth. A theta brain wave is the size of the planet, which means most of it will miss you. <laughs> most of it, right? 99.9% right. .9 of it will miss your body. And that's how our bodies, in a way, are not as affected by the huge amplitude of the frequency of the Earth. And there's a great example. Nikola Tesla in his lab in Colorado Springs synchronized with the wave that the Earth is oscillating at, okay. at 7.83 hertz. And when the power came into his power station, he shorted out the entire state of Colorado's electrical grid. He was kicked out of Colorado and moved to Long Island, New York. Why? Because, because he attenuated it so that he received the full amplitude of a single oscillation of the Earth. Now, if our human bodies did that, none of us would be alive. Right, and we wouldn't survive. We wouldn't survive the amplitude of a wave like that. So what I'm doing is pulsing waves that are in the range of the, of the human brain and nervous system all the way up to the 20,000 hertz range. Although most, what Wright found, strangely, is the greatest toning frequency to the human body is the wavelength of the planet Mercury, 20 hertz. Right. And, and that falls in the range of beta, the beta part of the brain, which is high focus, which is why when the planet Mercury goes retrograde, meaning it goes behind the sun four times of the year, we yeah. don't receive that beta part of the brain, so we get scattered. Everything goes out of order, right? So that's actually proof to me that the brain is receiving 
the part of the frequency of mercury just a smidgen under 20 hertz, right. which is what Rife found to be one of the most beneficial frequencies to the body because it brings everything into focus. It And Mars is about, it's right in the alpha brainwave length. It's just at lower alpha. So it's alphas are your focus, right? So when the brain is coherent, it has good alphas. When the brain is not coherent, it has poor alphas. So when Rife is treating diseases like cancer, he's not past 20,000 hertz. So when you see these articles that say you need a carrier wave for a Rife frequency, right. and the, I see one article here that says, let's see. Um, are, you some, talking about, are you talking about the gauze? No, I'm talking about the frequency of the carrier wave that Rife okay that some Rife machines are using. Some people are using 2.3 megahertz, it says here. Right. That's still pretty darn big. Believe it or not, 2.3 megahertz is, is, well, I'll tell you what it is right now, so let's do it. Okay. So people see, so you go, you take your speed of light in feet per second divided by the frequency. So I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna tell you how big 2.3 megahertz is. Divide, divided by 2,300,000 hundred thousand wait two million three hundred thousand is four hundred and twenty seven point six three nine feet right so that's still huge right. still a big wave most that's of that it's gonna most of it's gonna miss the body now the other thing that most of these right people are not understanding is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and that is that if you look at the electrons in their shells in the various elements within the human body and nervous system, when you transfer the, through the what's called the photoelectric effect, the photoelectric effect is transferring electromagnetic energy into atomic structures. And the higher the frequency of the wave, the more energy it transfers into the electron shell states around the nucleus of the atom, the proton and the neutron. So you you get you in other words, you're energizing all the atoms in your body with higher and higher frequencies. And there's a point where there's an argument, and, and these studies were done by the Electric Power Research Institute, and I've read all the studies, that radio frequencies can they heat up through this transfer of photoelectrism, the cells in the body and damage them. And what the study found, it was inconclusive whether the radio frequency ranges could heat up or damage cells in short term studies. Right. But there was no question that, that gigahertz, billion hertz wavelengths, and billion, now the internet, for example, at 5G, the wavelength is the size of a raindrop. So. It's extremely wow. penetrating, nowhere near the size of an atom, way bigger than that, but the size of a raindrop. So again, the higher the frequency, the more energy it transfers to the cell. Right. So the lower, the lower frequency wavelengths that I'm using with the wand are nowhere near in the scale that they could cause damage. That they could cause damage. Okay. Right. So if you're, if you're transmitting Rife frequencies at 28 megahertz, which is 427.63 feet, it's questionable whether that's good for the body or not. I, I personally do not subscribe to the idea of pulsing the body with high amplitude frequencies in the megahertz range. Only sounds, like it, sounds like it would cause havoc on the nervous system. Right. I, I think it would cause havoc on the nervous system. Now, I don't, I know a lot of people are going to get upset when I say something like this. The reason I'm pulsing with a crystal core, tourmaline crystal core, charge, charge plate gem, so we have the electrode running right through the tourmaline in the core, right. is that electromagnetic pulses through the piezoelectric effect will charge the gems and cause the rubies and the tourmaline in the core to release their energy for healing the body. Because 
We use rubies because in the in the Ayurvedic system of science in ancient India, the rubies ruby dust was used to cure cancer. They cured okay. cancer with yeah. They used to it, crush. They used to crush it and ingest it. They would crush it into a talcum powder and ingest it. So what is it about the rubies that they they're he, that is healing the body? It's the ion it gives off when it ionizes in the digestive tract. So I can ionize rubies by pulsing them with the piezoelectric effect and very weak, super, almost non-detectable um, ions will come off the rubies and the turmaline and go right through the, the, the crystal face, right through the aluminum. And because an ion is the size of an atom, it's an atom with an extra electron, either a positive or a negative ion. And those will pass right through your body. Now, the argument that the frequencies that I'm using, which are the are the original frequencies, I'm not using a carrier wave because I don't believe in right. using radio waves in the body, that the, that they won't penetrate the cells is ludicrous because I can take an EMF meter and read the signal on the other side of the body, right. and you and and we get results. We get. I mean, when I made the first wand, it was for a woman whose daughter broke her collarbone. And she had no movement of the hands and the fingers. And they were going to do nerve grafting. And she said, I want to try what you believe might help her. So we took the wand. We transmitted the sound of the sun. And within three months of daily use, she was moving her fingers again, which no doctor could do in the world. So to say that the frequencies aren't penetrating the body with the wand is ludicrous. Uh, this is just a competitor who is sticking to their science saying that you need you know you need a certain you need radio frequencies to penetrate the body no you can penetrate the body with with low frequencies medium and high frequencies in fact luke montagne who won the nobel prize for discovering co-discovering the aids virus has proven that human dna which has a wavelength so small way smaller than a drink or raindrop you're at the size of cells, so you're not at the size of atoms. At the size of a cell, the DNA will respond to 7 hertz. He did these studies. So 7 hertz is, is a little bit lower in frequency than the surface of the Earth. Well, how the heck is that happening? Because the wavelength of the cell is way smaller than 7 smaller. hertz. Because 7 hertz is bigger than the planet Earth. So all what he found is that living tissue, living biology was sensitive to ultra low frequencies. Right. So, so now, all these studies that say that if I'm using the natural frequency that Rife prescribed, plus all of my own frequencies is missing, isn't getting in the body is absolutely absurd with right. what Luke Montagne proved. See, the real data is the experiencer. It's not the science. In yeah. India, if they're curing people with rubies, they're curing people with rubies, okay? Yeah, yeah. And that's because a ruby is a chromium silica gem. There's something about chromium. And what does chromium do for the body? It hydrates the cells. And it's proven that a well-hydrated cell cannot get cancer, right? right. That doesn't mean if you eat a bunch of chromium, it's going to cure your cancer. But I would recommend taking chromium as a supplement and using the wand to ionize that material when it's inside the body. Yeah, I get positive comments almost every day from from clients who've been helped by our products. Right. So the other question is, is the wand transmitting the frequency that's going through it? I get that asked a lot. We have, first of all, different I have frequency tracks that have 10 or more frequencies on the same track, so you won't see a single frequency on a meter. But I've taken the wand, and I've taken a a frequency meter, and I can punch in all the way up to 20,000 hertz, and I can see it on the meter. No sound. Just just the the frequency I'm emitting is the frequency I'm receiving. Now, I'm using a good amplifier. If people... The better the amplifier you buy for your wand, the better the results you're going to get. You so which, a... which amplifier do you recommend for, for the average person? No, especially, I, especially... I recommend the Kinpu, which has, the price has gone up on those. It's a yeah. tube amp, but if you have the money, 
you can go on eBay and you can find really good stereo amplifiers. You know who makes one of the best stereo amplifiers in the world is Yamaha. The wow. quality and the distortion is so low on the on the Yamaha amps, and you can find used ones for three hundred bucks on eBay. Now, when it, if everybody goes on eBay, then there's not going to be any used ones left. You'll have to buy a new one. And new one, a good Yamaha new amp might cost you fifteen hundred dollars. But if you're serious about healing, that's nothing, right? Yeah, absolutely. I use I use amps at that quality. Now, if you use a really super cheap amp that's a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks, you may not see the frequency emitted that sh that's going in accurately. Right. You may see a lower quality, meaning higher see that the higher quality amps have the lowest distortion. But the point is that all the tests I've done show the correct frequency emitting from the wand. And I've even done experiments with two wands at the same time at a distance from each other. And if you put the same frequency through both of them, I can hear it in my stereo speakers. Um, the magnets in the stereo speakers, with they're not even plugged into the wand. I can hear the wands transmitting all the way across the house through my speakers. But right. when I use two or more wands together, so I know, I know they're synchronized. Because any right. two frequencies, regardless of distance are in are in communication with one another that's how radio works right, right. so remember we have luke montagne's proof that human dna can receive ultra low frequencies so there's no reason to transmit healing frequencies that are in the audible range up to twenty thousand hertz on a radio frequency carrier wave you don't need right. to do that right. because there, it's questionable whether megahertz is harmful to the body. It's not likely kilohertz in the 100,000 range is dangerous to the body unless it's extended use. But megahertz to gigahertz, gigahertz, yeah. gigahertz will heat up human sperm in 15 minutes on your laptop. Wow. So that was, that was in Yahoo News. So right. don't use, I don't use, carrier waves for that reason i believe rife was mistaken and that i have advanced this to another level now my emitter there are people that use plasma which is really just a, a an ionized gas and gas yeah there's gas tube rife products yeah, out there. gas tubes you see electrons get excited in a gas very easily but the ion that comes off of the gas is an ion of that particular gas. And most of the gases, the noble gases, their ions don't interest me at all. I'd rather have a chromium or an, an aluminum ion is very powerful. White uh, sapphires are aluminum crystals. That's what a sapphire is. So right. aluminum ions are incredibly powerful. Now, whereas aluminum, is toxic to the body in large quantities, but but an aluminum ion is not. It's a very powerful thing. It it kills bacteria. It disin. You can use copper, aluminum, or there are many different metals. Silver, where their ions will disinfect. They will. You can put a virus on aluminum or copper, and it will kill the virus. Right. So, but I don't want you to ingest aluminum. I'm, no. I'm talking about an ion, which is an atom with an extra negative or positive electron on it, which goes right through the wall of the container of the wand. The, the, the coil in the wand is copper. And so you're going to get copper, you're going to get ruby, and tourmaline. Tourmaline is lithium and magnesium ions. You've got all these beautiful ions coming off the wand. Right. Now, you often say ratio is more important than frequency. Can you tell us what you mean by that, David? Ratio is, is, the, is the proportion of two or more frequencies together. Right. A ratio sets up a difference, a differential, which causes energy to flow from, point a, from frequency A to frequency B. If the ratio is not harmonic, there'll be distortion in that transfer, which means it'll cause distortion in the body. Where the C 
single standing point frequency doesn't move from point A to point B. It stands in that same spot. It just vibrates, vibrates, vibrates in a single position. Now, the chakras and the endocrine system correspond to each other. We have the sexual glands at the base of the spine. Then you get into the adrenal glands at the base of the two kidneys. You get into the, the, the heart and thymus gland system, which regulates lung, heart, and the body's natural DMT and ecstasy. You get into pituitary and pineal in the head. You get into the thyroid gland in the throat. So the endocrine system corresponds to the, the chakra system. And to get energy to move from, from throughout the whole system, a single standing point frequency will cause vibrations in the endocrine system, but it won't move the energy the way ratios do. So that's why when you transmit a lot of my frequency tracks, there's 10 or more frequencies going on that are in perfect ratio to each other. Perfect ratio. So ratios are something Rife didn't even use. Okay. I discovered the most perfect harmonic ratios in existence in the Great Pyramid music scale. They're far more perfect than the Pythagorean music scale ratios because they have less distortion between the notes, right? Right. So imagine your seven chakras or nine to ten chakras, depending on which system you use, mm -hmm. are, are musical notes. And yeah. so if you're moving... They are. They are musical notes. So if you yeah. want to move energy from, from chakra A to chakra B, and there's distortion between the two frequencies, distortion is when part of the wave is crashing into the other wave, right? So you're, so, but then by that, by that statement, you're saying that um, the root chakra isn't C, the, the next chakra isn't D. Uh, they don't correspond. Pythagoras' music scale is not as perfect as the pyramid scale. Okay. So when you use my pyramid frequencies, they're all in perfect harmony. I can send you the link on that video online where people can listen to the pyramid scale versus all the other scales in existence, and you can see it's far more perfect. In the, So you, you watch this YouTube video. I'm going to send it to you now, and you can send okay. it out with this, with this podcast for people so who have not seen this. You need to see this video with headphones. You can't listen to this. The secret meditation frequencies of the Great Pyramid. You can't listen to this on your speakers, on your laptop or your phone. You're not going to experience it correctly. You have to have headphones and preferably decent ones. And that demonstrates the, the Pyramid music scale is the superior music scale, which was first discovered by the Greek Orpheus, the Greek god of music, who out, outstripped the Pythagorean music scale created by Apollo, Hermes, wow. and Athena in the Greek system. So our music scale is Pythagorean and, 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 and its Greek. source, and it's not as perfect. You'll see the difference. So that's the more perfect and the lower the distortion between the two notes and the third note and the fourth note all the way to seven or ten note scales, the, the lower the distortion, the higher the harmonic quality is. And the pyramid scale clearly beats the Pythagorean scale. Plus, the pyramid scale has three scales of 120 tones each. So there's 360 tones as there are 360 degrees in a circle. And there's no other music scale in existence compared to what I discovered in the pyramid. Not, and they're very healing for the body, way beyond anything Rife discovered. What Rife discovered is that <clears throat> animating the cells with frequencies can energize the mitochondria in the cell and cause the body to help it fight the disease. Um, when you're at a great distance from the Rife machine, the, right. the, the weakness and the strength of the frequency is very, very weak. Just like the wand, it's very strong about one foot. So wherever the disease in the body, you hold the wand yeah. is close to the affected area and move it around a bit. It's also good to pulse the brain for up to five minutes. You can hold the wand right up to your third eye where the rubies right. are. Um, in fact, there's 
There's a really good article, I'll send you this link right now that you can use that shows that doctors are starting to realize that you can treat patients with um, um, pulse magnetic therapy on the brain. Okay. I mean, they're starting to figure this out. I'm I'm way ahead of them, but you can, okay. you can actually I'd pull appreciate that. the... Um, Let's see, where is it? I thought I had it bookmarked. So, so oh. when somebody is working on their body, they want to be within one feet of whatever it is that's the oh. base in the body. It's the exactly. strongest at one foot, but you okay. can feel it six feet away. Okay, um, yeah, that's what that's. Also, David, people state that if you use the device less than six to eight hours, it will not be effective. What is your take on this? how long rife would only do no more than 10 minute treatments okay and now there's some arguments that people right. need to be yeah there's people stating that you need six to eight hours with a rife machine at a high at a high intensity in order for it to be effective so um, rife never did treatments can you that speak long. to that can you speak the to right right never did treatments that long okay. see the the problem here's where the problem is <clears throat> when the the United States government hired a physicist named um, John Goffman at Berkeley under Glenn Seaborg, who was the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission under Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon. I knew both of these scientists personally, and I spoke to Goffman hours and hours and hours before he died. When they were doing studies on the human body and 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 cancer in relationship to humans being exposed to ionizing radiation, nuclear radiation, they strangely found that the male prostate could benefit from radioactive frequencies. And they found, in fact, you could kill cancer in the prostate. And, and these studies were done by John Goffman, whereas in females, it would cause cancer in the breasts. So, wow. so what they found was that they knew that frequencies could have an effect on cancer, sometimes adverse and sometimes proactive. Right. So they started, that's what led to the invention of chemotherapy, exposing the body to huge amounts of, of, of frequencies in the gamma spectrum and right. also, the, also even... Um, lower frequencies than that, such as beta and alpha, beta and gamma waves, and even x-rays. Um, they even found that x-rays help the male prostate <clears throat> with cancer, but not females, not females right. at all. So what they did is they invented chemotherapy based on that because they could see the cancer dying, but it was also killing the healthy tissue, which is the problem with chemo. Right. The reason they don't acknowledge pulse magnetic therapy devices and, and PEMF devices is because they can't see the results right away. You have to do it every day. You own your wand, you do it every day. And after months of doing it, the cancer starts to die right. and other disease. But because they can't see it in the lab right away, they say, oh, there's nothing happening here. I can't see anything happening. There's right. no proof that anything's happening because I've done three tests. No, no. See, the human body when it wakes up, the sunlight stimulates us to come out of our sleep through the photoelectric effect of transferring electromagnetism into the cells. It animates the cells and the body starts waking up out of the deep sleep because there's no light, right? Right. And so basically what it shows is the human body is stimulated by electromagnetic energy. I've even taken alfalfa sprouts and turned them green with no sunlight using the wand in the dark, right? Because I believe you. It's electromagnetism. Of course it's yeah. going to do it. Yeah. So electromagnetism, what I'm saying is, stimulates the cells, helps the body beat cancer, especially if you take a tiny amount of lithium, like five milligrams, you take potassium, you take magnesium, you take germanium, you take chromium, and you, you take it with hot water and lemon, and then you do a wand treatment right after you drink that, that formula. That's very key, the formula that I recommend for people to use with the wand. Because the wand 
will, through the piezoelectric effect, will pulse all of those crystals in the body and cause them to emit very weak ions. And okay. the nervous system loves that. It loves ions. That's why, you know, you know what is a great source of, of natural ions, positive and negative? You light a fire. What? what? You light oh. a fire with real wood, put some rocks in there. And I've done this yeah. with a good $800 ion meter, and there's right. tons of ions coming off that fire, both negative and positive. Positive ions are expanding. Negative ions are contracting, receiving. Okay. So you need both. So you light a fire, and that also can really help the body heal. Just sitting in front of the fireplace or sit outside and sit close to the fire really helps heal the body. That answers, I think, all of those questions. Except, you... for, maybe, except for maybe the 3 to 6 gauze versus the 10,000 milligauze, although in... in... The wand is way past 10,000 milligauze. Oh okay, God. so... Okay. It depends what frequency. See, what happens with milligauss and, and Tesla is the lower frequencies produce the highest milligauss and gauss ratings, right? The higher the frequency gets, the, the milligauss goes down because the, okay. the higher the frequency, the lower the amplitude. But that doesn't mean, see, people don't understand milligauss and gauss, okay. right? It, it, low frequencies, like the frequency of the earth, will produce huge milligauss on the wand or my coils. But then you, you go to higher frequencies, you won't see hardly any. But that's, right. This, it, so it's, that's, relative, it's relative to the frequency. It's then. relative to the frequency. When you get to radio frequencies, you won't see any milligauss because milligauss is magnetic field. Radio and microwaves are electromagnetic field. So what about the school of thought that says that magnetic fields are dangerous to the body? What's your, well, what's your response to that? The Earth has a magnetic field. The sun yeah. has a magnetic field. We live on natural magnetic uh, electromagnetism. So mm -hmm. there's good EMF from nature. We dream from the energy of the planets and the stars because they all carry EMF. If you block your, your sleeping space, you block everything. Right. You do not want to block your space because you're living on natural frequencies. What you want to do is use the wand or the coil or the staff and be in control of the frequencies of your own space and not be constantly bombarded by microwave tower activity. So if you block the microwaves, you're also blocking the stars, you're blocking everything. But most people aren't even blocking correctly. I need to do a whole video on what true blocking is. You can't use crystal or shungite. Nothing blocks microwaves nothing there's only right. one way to block it and that means you surround your whole house in metal and you ground it to the earth and if the metal's not grounded it won't block i've tested this but you know how much money it costs to block your whole house and then you're going to block oh, yeah. all of the beneficial frequencies from the sun the earth the nine planets and the cosmos right. then you're dead Right. So you don't want to live in a wave trap because then you're dead. You're dying. Right. You're killing the body. We live on electromagnetism from the sun, from the stars, from the planets. So the whole theory of blocking is not correct. You don't want to do this because then the cancer will thrive because you don't have any energy. There's no cosmic right. energy. So right. we're not meant to live in a cave where you block frequencies. You're meant to be able to work with positive and negative exactly. frequencies. Exactly. So my systems are not, I'm not interested in blocking. I'm interested in creating a vortex of desirable frequencies in your space to counteract the Wi-Fi in the microwave towers. That's right. So they can still exist, let them be, but we can, we can work within them. In fact, we can, we can cause them to harmonize. The will, will be thousands of times stronger than the signal coming in from those things. Right. It's very weak. What there by the time the microwave tower reaches your house, it's super weak. But that weak microwave, if that's all you get, and you're not you're not creating your own harmonic, it will slow. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you, David. Thank you for your time today, and we look forward to talking to you again in the very near future. Thank you.